Seven years ago, I asked a girl in my class to go out with me. I asked her to marry me yesterday. Uh, read more. We should probably read more. She said no both times. What's a must-have on your tour rider? Uh, lots of, lots of alcohol. Saying that he was, he died barking at the moon on all fours. We talk football every time we see Blossoms, right? And they tell a great story about being in Denmark, I think it was, with you. And you took on some lads who you thought you were going to give a paste to. And he, they said Jake's kind of like a manager. He like ran the team, discussed the formation, took it very seriously. Could you give us an appraisal of their ability as uh, footballers, please? Well, they turned up in their shoes, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone off the record would probably have to be Gimme the Love. Oh, really? It kind of has this like undertone Manchester vibes. And let's be honest, you're kind of rapping on it in a way. A little bit, yeah. Little bit. I think so. It's just one note, so it sounds like it's yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not very melodic, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a little bit up, uh, upbeat than uh, than some of my other songs. It's super catchy. Would you call yourself an all right rapper? How would you kind of put yourself on the rapping scale? I would put myself on the bottom of the of the scale. My girl sang this to me when I went away to prison. God, I love that woman. Still together today and free from jail to long live Jake Bug. Interesting. <laughs> I was a fan of Jake Bug and. He had one album out. After a year, I'd be pretty bored of it. That's stolen. It's not stolen. Oh my god, why have you stolen a ring? Well, I haven't stolen it, have I? <laughs> it's a bad sign, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like, come on, lads. No, they were all right. And yeah, we absolutely got hammered and we was like, we were like, oh, we all, we all smoke and that. And, and then after these lads had just wiped the floor of us, they all just like start, start lighting their fags as well. <laughs> I remember once I was playing it in. Uh, in Japan at the Summer Sonic and the heat and the humidity was just ridiculous and and uh, and I was sweating and some sweat went in my eye and my eye was stinging and I was crying and I was playing broken everyone's like you know all the fans are like wow he's, he's so into it I was just like ah. I don't know how they can really be considered a band though to be honest so I'm not too sure I think they're there to look good Music-wise, I assume they don't really have a clue, so we'll just see. They might do, you know, some of the, probably the ugliest one, probably the best singer. That's usually how it works, isn't it? So uh, he, might have a, he might know a couple of chords. Another thing we do regularly on the radio at the moment is live affirming moments, right? So those special points at gigs that will live with you for the rest of your life. Is there one that you've got as a punter, as a fan, that will live with you forever? Uh, well, I think it was many years ago at the Isle of Wight Festival where there was a guy dressed uh, as a baby in an inflatable cut, which always blew my mind how that's even possible. <laughs> and then, uh, and then a guy on top of his stood on his shoulders, and then uh, in a in a G string and proceeded to, well, you know, r r reveal himself. Yeah, the video was fun. Um, you know, <laughs> so somebody mentioned to me earlier that they'd never seen me dance before, and uh, yes. I, I hadn't either. So, <laughs> what's the name on the team sheet out of that mob? Who would you pick to be in the team first? Oh, I don't know. Do you realise how important this is to them? Yeah, it's a tough call. I'd just say which one ever brings their football boots, to be honest. <laughs> if everyone yeah. brings their socks and the, and the, and the boots, they, they, they can be first on. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I came across something saying that your greatest fear is zombies. Is that still the case? Yeah. Okay, let me let me know a little bit about that. Why is that? I know. It, I don't, it, it don't have to be like, you know, the rise of the undead. It could just be a, a genetic mutation of some kind, and you could have... You know, like the film World War Z or something. It could be something like that crazy stuff. I don't want that happening. That'd be horrible. <laughs> Thank you, mate. I'll sell it on eBay. Isn't it? Well, I think one guy said that I sounded like a, a wasp under a plastic cup, which I found pretty funny. I thought that was really good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> or, do you drink? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, this is for real. No! Night out with, an, with another celebrity and why? I remember one strange night in particular, it was like very odd. Um, we, played at the, um, we played at the Nobel Peace Prize in, um, in Norway and, and then for some reason, you know, there's all these Norwegian royalty there and things like that and then we bumped into James Blunt and it just ended up being a carnage random night which I can't explain why and uh, he kind of went off into the night and, uh, and I did my thing so bizarre. It, it wasn't like the best, it was just random as hell, do you know what I mean? I never thought random we'd cross paths, do you know what I mean? Well. Yeah, exactly. It was like, honestly, he was well up for it, he was. He was <laughs> fucking buzzing. All right, mate, how are you? Car. Well, thanks for, you know, making the efforts to come out. I was already meant to be here, so. Yeah. I sometimes feel that I was meant to be here. <laughs> <laughs>
If something were to happen, like a zombie apocalypse, let's say, I have to ask the question. Do you think you'd be able to survive it? Uh, I don't think I'd want to survive it.